Well, we are at it again with our little reaction thing with Uski here. We're going to um, look at Infinite Galactica. I think that's how he pronounced his name. It's been about for fucking ever. Uh, I used to watch everything he did back in the olden days. Well, I stumbled across this video. Uh, choosing arts is hard because it kind of makes me a little bit like, what? Like, uh, uh, the, this thing with arts Linux is that it's uh, arts Linux is you. You choose the software. You choose everything about art, uh, even if you are installing um, Endeavor OS and stuff like that. You make the choice with art Linux if you want to go the convenient route, the easy route, call it whatever you want. Or if you want to go the, I am a nerd, I'm going to flex my nerd uh, muscles and do it the um, art Linux way. So art by itself is... It's about choice. Ubuntu, not so much. Well, it is about choice of the software, but they have a pre-selective package that they're providing you and saying, this is Ubuntu, this is Kubuntu, this is Subuntu, this is what we gave you. This is what you get out of the box. And then you can de-install, install on top of that and, you know, morph it into your own creation after the install. But Arts Linux like you choose from the get-go. And a lot of people like that. So so choosing Arts is hard. It makes me a little bit like, that's the point about Arts, is that you get choice from the ISO, like from 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 how you want to install it. What, you know, what for, you know, it's all about <laughs> the choice. What this, uh, I think is from Australia, uh, Australian bloke is about. Have a situation and that is that when it comes to choosing linux distributions every linux user goes through phases of distro hopping and while i can't exactly use those terms to describe the situation i'm in right now it's something like that here's the situation choosing arch is ridiculously hard choosing linux in general is difficult i'll grant you but choosing arch in particular or a distribution based on arch is becoming increasingly difficult for a number of reasons no I, I i i don't personally like arts that much but i will go in here and say it's not hard because let's take endeavor OS, easy arch salient os um name your arts distribution and of course vanilla arts the only difference the only difference between salient os easy arts endeavor os and vanilla arts is the pre-selected packages that you get when you're installing those distributions or, or yeah, distributions. That's the only difference. In DevOS, you get customization and a little bit of tools. Same in OS, you get his uh, silent robots, preferred packages and a little bit of tweaking. Easy arts, you get arts with his selected packages. The arts, the arts way, you choose the package you want to install. That's the different part, a difficult part, apparently. I don't get it. it, it, it choosing a, a Arch Linux distribution is just which package do you like the best? It's like, you know, choosing an accessory package for your car. You get the stock standard car, that's Arch Linux. I want the sports upgrades. That could be um, Salient OS. No, I, I want the uh, Comfort upgrade. That could be uh, Endeavor OS. I just want different colors and rims. That could be uh, Easy Arch. So it's not really that difficult. It's, it's, anyway, let's get into it here. And I fucked up the timeline. I'm that. This is that we have a lot of great quality Linux distributions focused on desktop use for regular everyday Linux enthusiasts who just want to get stuff done. That's where I sit. I am not a uh, somebody that has to work professionally in IT. I'm then Arch Linux is not for you. I'm not a software developer, and at this point, many of you might click away. I'm a casual gamer. I Arch Linux is not for you. I know a lot of people want Arch Linux to be a casual Ubuntu user group target distribution. Arch Linux is not for the casual crowd. A lot of people try to make Arch Linux into the casual crowd. Again, you know, different Arch Linux, we spend Gurada Linux and stuff like that. They try to make Arch more accessible, but Arts Linux by design is not meant for the casual user. No matter how much you try to take a, a, a square or let's say a rectangular shape and put it into a square hole, they will never fit. You can never make Arts Linux into a modern day convenient, easily accessible operating system because by DNA, it's not meant to be like that. 
That's why Mantiao is forking arts and it's not Arts Linux because they are modifying it so much to make try and put a, a, a triangle into a square hole. And let's be honest, Mantiao is not the easiest or most convenient uh, distribution out there. It still have a lot of inherent design problems that it has dis, uh, inherited from Arch Linux. Because it's by design, it's not meant to be what he's just talking about. I do a bit of video editing and I'm a high school teacher, so I do some of that sort of stuff. And when it comes to what I need out of a Linux distribution has mostly been served by Ubuntu and Debian based distros with a little bit of Fedora along the way. So I figured it was time to jump back into the world of Arch because honestly, my terminal commands in the Arch Linux space are getting very rusty indeed. So what I thought I'd do is I'd- That should not, like, unless you're an IT professional that are working with Arch Linux in a professional environment, if your skill in a distribution gets rusty, it's not that big of a deal. Like I, I learned basic, uh, Microsoft basic like 10 years ago and I have never touched it again. I, I probably can't even do hello world in Microsoft basics, okay? Is that a problem? No, <laughs> because I'm not using it. So don't, don't be afraid of skills that you learn is getting rusty if you never use them. Learn something that you are going to use instead. Because if they're getting rusty, that just means that they are not in your life right now. You know, the, the skill you learned is not important or prevalent in your life that you have right now. And that's fine. We all evolve. Bring you guys along on the journey of actually choosing one of these things and then starting to run it uh, or at least attempting to getting it set up, etc, etc. So this is not so much a distro hopping episode as much as it is about let's discover what are the different options out there if you're wanting to choose an arch based distro to run and what might be the pros and cons of each of those as I'm interpreting them. Get some on, of these it. have been around for some time. Others have been uh, have joined the chat since last I checked out arch land. So have your memes at the ready. Give your suggestions down below as to what I should check out and get ready for I use Arch, by the way. Oh my God. All right, so when we're talking about Arch Linux, we can't really start the conversation anywhere other than running vanilla Arch. And this is something that I did do uh, quite some years ago now. Uh, in fact, I might put a card to that video so that you can go and check that out. But Arch Linux uh, by its own description is meant to be a simple, lightweight, minimalist distribution. And I, I, would, go, I would call it in here because a lot of people today, they misconstrue this. Lightweight and flexible. Lightweight and flexible. That's what you get with the vanilla ISO. You make the choices. Simple. Don't mean easy. Complicated can be simple. Simple basically just means that you're not getting 10,000 choices to do the same thing. They kind of are like, this is how you configure arts. This is how you run arts. This is how you maintain arts. They don't give you like 10,000 different fucking ways endorsed by the developers, by the way. You can still download tools that can give you 10,000 different ways of doing things. But by default, you are not getting 10,000 config files to configure um, the host name and stuff like that. They try to keep the configuration and the running of Arch Linux simple. That uh, That is very much build your own adventure. And mm -hmm. uh, and many would argue that this is the way that Linux is meant to be done. No, uh, now no, 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 no. I, I, the only people I've heard that say that about Linux is Arch Linux users. Linux was, was not meant to be build your own adventure. Lin, Lin, again, a lot of people tend to forget this. Linux was meant, was built by a high school fucking kid that couldn't afford Unix, but needed and wanted a Unix-like system to use at home for work in, in university and stuff like that. So he built Linux. Not to spread the word of open source or outcompete Microsoft or anything like that. It was built to basically outcompete Unix and it has already done that. So it actually have reached the goal that was intended for Linux. Nowadays, though, Arch Linux is more known for a slightly more elitist uh, user base and Massive. possibly one of the greatest innovations that we have in the open source packaging software world, and that is the Arch user repository. No, 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 no. <laughs> 
There's there, there, there's nothing like massively. Um, uh, how can I put it? Technically and advanced about the AUI. It functions a little bit like I think it's ports on the uh, free BSD. It's basically just scripts. Downloading a script file and running a script file to either compile or compress or when has been, com I don't mean compress, I mean uh, recompile or reformat a package format. Nothing really advanced with that. Open source, I have it. A lot of this, I think Fedora have something like that also. And it's not that great. It doesn't have a massive amount of software. Yes. Back in the day, this was one of the best ways to get hard to get software installed on your system. Yeah. Uh, because it basically streamlined the whole building from source hassle. No, no, no. Like I said before, what they do with the AU, and a lot of people tend to forget that you can either build it from source. What people most of the time does, and this will maybe make a little bit people angry because they don't know this. They take a depth file and convert it to a, a native Arch Linux package format. Or they take an RPM file. So when you are saying that us, the AUR have more software than any other distribution, it may have more packages. But I will suspect that 995 whatever percentage of those packages are just depth files and RPM files, meaning that Debian distribution or depth file based distributions have access to 99% of the same packages or RPM have pa access to the 95% of those packages. Because if you look at actually what they're doing, a lot of time they're just converting depth files or RPM files. A lot of time, especially with the more popular software. The more obscure, you know, this is made by Bob in his basement while the dog is digging his asshole, may be compiled from source. And so while the AUR is still great, it has, uh, in my use cases anyway, been superseded by a lot of the standardized packaging formats like Flatpak and Snap that are just infinitely more secure than what the AUR ever was. Now, mm. that is to say that Arch Linux, if you're going to go about doing it uh, and you want to learn a bunch in the process, it's best to start there. And my, my suggestion would stand true for any other large distribution which has a lot of derivatives. All of these big distributions that have been around for a long time are well established for a reason. However, derivatives exist and there are lots of good ones in the Arch space. I do want to give an honorable mention to Manjaro, but honestly, in my book anyway, Manjaro is not really an Arch base. Not in his book. And this is where a lot of people get fucking frustrated. I will put it up here because I have it. The word, you know, the, the, the word that comes out from the developers of Arch, Manjaro, sorry, Manjaro. They themselves say that it's not an Arch Linux distribution. So he's actually right here. It's not in his opinion. It's in the official opinion of the official developers that Manjaro is not Arch Linux. And you can debate the fuck you want. You are wrong if you say Manjaro is Arch Linux. You, you are categorically, scientifically proving wrong. Distro anymore. Uh, I think there is some shared heritage there. Yeah, it, it has never been an Arch Linux distribution. Again, the word for the Arch Manjaro developer's mouth. Yeah, and at one point, Manjaro definitely derived its uh, package base and the rest of it from Arch. It's and while an argument could be made that this still happens, Manjaro is very much its own project now. And yeah. it runs... So he hasn't read up about... It. This is what I hate about a lot of people when they're trying to make informative videos. They don't inform themselves. What Manjaro does... They do exactly what Ubuntu is doing. They are, they are taking the, the art space, modifying it, modifying the packages, testing the packages, and putting it into their own repo. That's why when you're running Manjiao, you don't get you don't have to do a lot of the same manual interventions like you're doing with Arch Linux because they are making sure that you don't have to by modifying the packages when they're coming into the Manjiao repos. But they are using Arch as a base. And then they are taking the packages there, modifying it, messing with them, tinkering them, poking them. So they are not really the native Arch Linux packages anymore, but they use it as a base. It's exactly the same that Ubuntu is doing with Debian. Firefox in Ubuntu may be different than Firefox in, Arch, in, in Debian. Can you install the Ubuntu packages and not the Debian? Probably yes. Can you install the Debian packages, uh, the, uh, Firefox from the Debian repo in Ubuntu? Probably yes, but the packages may be massively different. 
the same with Manjaro versus Arts. Firefox and Manjaro may be a different package than Firefox under Arts because Manjaro people have modified it. Pretty much independent of what Arch does. So while Manjaro is fantastic, in my mind, I don't really count it as an Arch-based distro anymore. Maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. Let me know what you think down below. Uh, but here are some of the other ones that I've picked up on since uh, checking out in Archland. Um, one of the ones that caught my attention in 2020 was oh. Garuda Linux. So Garuda Linux seems to be an Arch-based distribution. I can rant about how wrong and how fucking stupid Garuda Linux or Garuda Linux is for hours. I have videos about it. Go to my video page, click the little um, magnifying glass and then search Gurada, Gurada Linux, or however the fuck you pronounce it. I have rants about how this distribution is doing everything fucking wrong almost. Is it an arts-based distribution? I would say yes. With a really nice implementation of the different desktop environments, and you can kind of take your pick as to which ones you prefer. And it also has quite a few little optimizations and tweaks along the way to optimize gaming, probably which are giving the end user base a lot of problems. More so than others. Uh, but it also has a, a lot of little tools that make it really easy to manage some of the headaches that come with an Arch-based system. So if you want to have a little bit more control over what your AUR installs are doing, you can do that. If you want to have a little bit more control over what your uh, over what your Arch system is doing. And it's taken a few cues here from Manjaro in terms of managing. It, it's not taking a few cues. It's basically taking the, this you see here, the, the Gurada settings manager is just a reprint of Manjaro settings managing hardware drivers, kernels, etc. It gives you graphical tools to get those things done, which I appreciate. And it gives you a fantastic suite of software to get going with Linux gaming, which I think- Which is really massively inconsistent in the way it gets for tool tips and stuff like, again, I could write. Is again, really, really helpful for the right person. Now, for me personally, where do I rate this particular distribution? Oh, shout out to the Linux Zen kernel as well. Basically, a, a, just an optimized version of the Linux kernel. No, it's optimized for a specific use case, but it's not optimized for, for general desktop use. A misconception a lot of people have about the Zen kernel. Directed for multimedia and gaming. Uh, but the, the pros of Garuda Linux, at least from what I'm picking up and my testing in virtual machines and that kind of thing, seems to indicate that Garuda Linux is about getting that RGB action going. Yeah. In it's for kids that like flashy fucking shit. Garuda Linux or Garuda or whatever the fuck you pronounce it, is, is the same, people that use that are the same people that have, you know, those cars that's, you know, lower to the ground, big at wheels, uh, LEDs all over the fucking place, and lights and, and big fucking masses, subwoofers in the back end, and stereos that you can hear from miles away. You know, they, they talk you drift kind of people. As quick a time as possible. And they have been able to create a really well curated desktop Linux experience for those that want to use the flexibility and power and performance of an Arch-based system. Which again, Arch Linux is not massively faster than any other distribution. Depends on what you're doing. If you're going to choose a distribution because of its speed or, or usability for the workload that you are going to do, AKA, are you rendering videos all the time? You have to test a lot of distributions because I've seen benchmarks where OpenSUSE beats Arch Linux in rendering. I've seen benchmarks where if you are, uh, let's say you're interacting a lot with file servers, Ubuntu is faster with files transfer a lot of times than, than Arch Linux is. If you want optimal performance for your most use case workloads, you have to test distributions to see which one is actually optimized for. And a lot of times it's all over the place. It's not Arch is just universal, the fastest, fastest. It was 15 years ago. And apply it to the gaming world. Uh, so Garuda Linux, it looks really nice and it definitely has that it's got a look, and the look is pretty darn good, if you're into that kind of thing. Damn good. All right, on. another one that is, uh, I don't really know if I can describe it as a Arch-based distribution, it's because not. while there is a list provided by the fabulous Arch Wiki about uh, active distributions based on Arch, 
and there's a bunch of them. Some of these, I don't know if I would count them as Arch based anymore. For example, Car OS or Chaos or yeah, that, that's that, again. It says here it's it's an independent distribution. That means that it's not forked off anything. It's not based on anything. It's just using the Pac-Man package manager. So yeah, it's not an Arch distribution. I don't really. I'm not really sure how you pronounce half of these things, but uh, Chaos, Chaos. I'll call it Chaos for now. Chaos is a, mm. uh, a KDE Plasma desktop. This distribution was at one point based on Arch, but nowadays it is independent, kind of in the same way that Manjaro is. But then it's take it out of the fucking uh, equation. Let me make one thing clear: Chaos, Chaos is a very different beast to anything like Manjaro. Uh, it is basically trying to be the best. I, I don't know what he's talking. Like I, I, I'm going to 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 skip this because he just said himself that it has nothing to do with Arch Linux. Why the fuck do you have it as as a option to choose Arch Linux? It, is this this dude is a teacher? I'm I'm really um, yeah. Let, let's go into the next one here. Endeavor OS. In my opinion, Endeavor OS is up to now is the only real Arch distribution that he's shown us. Meaning that if you want to choose. Arts Linux beside the native uh, um, vanilla Arts ISO, you have Endeavor OS. Now, the one that everybody seems to be buzzing about most of all is Endeavor OS. And this is something that... Uh, amazing OS, amazing community. I love this distribution. Uh, there was, there were, back in the day, there was a community distribution uh, that was a spin-off of Arch called Antergos. Antergos. Uh, and that distribution was a fantastic project that a lot of people really loved mm -hmm. clearly not a lot not enough people loved it because it went away eventually um and obviously there's probably more to the story there than what i have um, dreadfully oversimplified that as but uh, a lot of the community that really enjoyed Entergos created Endeavor OS, I think in 2019, could be wrong again about that, um, but they have uh, carried the torch on in creating a uh, a terminal based terminal centric arch based distribution um, but giving it a few more features and buffs to make it a little more approachable and uh, and easy to get going so a custom implementation of the calamaras installer makes it very easy again like i said this is the only real alternative to vanilla Arch that he's shown us easy to get up and going with whatever window manager you want to choose and in theory this desktop is a uh, desktop agnostic, meaning that it doesn't prefer or prioritize one desktop environment over another. But the good news is, is that when you do get going with this distribution, you're getting going with a well curated starting base for you to build whatever software you want to build on top of that. And honestly, this is kind of the happy middle ground and the reason why I think Endeavor OS has found such a happy community. Now, again, when it comes to rating how popular Linux distributions are, it is nearly impossible. According to the metrics that were used in years past, DistroWatch page rankings and the like, those metrics became very quickly unreliable and not useful. However, just by general buzz and chatter around the internet, it would seem that the Endeavor OS uh, project has grown rather healthily and uh, mm -hmm. and quickly over the last two and a half, three. And you know why they did they, they are that because of the community, the way that the us uh, not us the, the way the Mantiao OS developers and team are handling the community. Toxicity kicking the balls. Negativity kicking the balls. Elitism kicking the balls. That's why people like this fucking shit. They are there to help the users. They are there to help people run Arts Linux. They're not there to be like, we are better than everyone else. They are not there to be like, virtue sickling their fucking manhood with a Linux distribution. They are there to help you. That's why people like this distribution. Three years or so. And it seems to be able to strike that really perfect balance between giving a flexible arch based user experience while also offering enough curation that you're not pulling your hair out wishing that you'd installed a different init. So ladies and gents, unless there is another suggestion that I have just wildly forgotten about, let me know below. Oh, there's so many. <laughs> this, this should have been Endeavor OS. Uh, Satan OS could be in there, Easy Arts could be in there, Ant6 I think it's called could be in there, uh, uh, Arcolytic should could be in there. Just go on, what he should have been done, go on to DistroWatch and, and set based on Arts Linux and then actually read 
research the distributions that he's talking about. He has apparently not researched the distributions that he's talking about, or he has just looked at this to watch, just take it for, you know, as gospel what this to watch is saying. I'm, I'm trying to find a, a, a comparable alternative to what he's doing here to like, if a, if a student was going up to him as a teacher with an essay, it would probably be like that they have just read the, the headlines from an article and maybe the first paragraph and then cited that as fact that gospels in 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 um in the essay without actually understanding what the article was about and therefore when, then when they have used that as this is where i got my information from and he's reading the essay and then he's reading the source material the source material has nothing to do with the what is the subject of back actually not not even backing up the points that they are trying to make, aka the source material they are using to base their opinion on is wrong. I think this is the one that I'm going to start experimenting with. As you can see, I've got the image up and running here in boxes, and I do plan on experimenting with well, Endeavor OS a little here? bit further in boxes in a virtual machine, and then I'm yeah, going- Yeah, okay, then, then he's going over the- <sighs> the I don't understand the point of this video. I really don't. It, it seems like he has not researched the subject good enough. L let, let, let's, let's go and, and, and do this towards here. And go in here. And go search. Uh, based on. Arts. Submit. Endeavor. I mean, I'm not correct. I will not call it Arco Linux. Blue Star. Mi Box. Artscraft. Arkman, Reborn, Snake. There are so many here. Artex, Artslab. I don't know how he got to KAOS. Because it's not even in here. KAOS is not even in here. Maybe he used the list in the uh, in the Artsdenis Wiki. Yeah, this is like the 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 the, the, the <laughs> this is the worst research video I've seen from him. He tends to make a good a lot of good videos, but this one here, he's definitely dropped the ball here. Anyway, see you all later. Bye bye.